everyone, it's Melanie. I This is another one of those, okay, I'm just going to turn the camera on because um, I'm never going to get it all perfect. So um, I thought I would show you what I'm working on and see how everyone's doing. Um, so I saw Rachel at Roxy Creations. Rachel was doing that this sew for the soul um like snippet strip kind of thing um back in the spring and um it's the challenge or it was hosted by Ann Brooke and I'll put all the links that I can think of um down in the description box, but she's on YouTube. Ann Brooke Textile Artist is her channel name. And uh, it was a snippet kind of roll that you do, but it's all decorative, you don't cut it up. Um, but you do it and put it on a vintage wooden spool. And when I saw Rachel doing it, that was my first, um, that was when I, I had never seen um, and Brooks work before um, so that was new to me and I didn't have one of those I don't have one of those wooden spools one of those vintage spools and I I'm very proud of myself because normally I would have been right away on eBay buying one which would have turned into buying 12 which would have turned into all of a sudden I'm writing a thesis on the history of wooden spools. So I decided to pass on that one because I didn't have a spool and I somehow made a wise decision not to start another project. So I watched Rachel's with Envy and I watched Anne's and then when Anne finished the kind of snippet roll thing, she started a book. So the book, and I'll link to her, and I'll link to um, Rachel, and the book is called, the, the other project is Sew so for the Soul, using the number four, and this book that she's doing is, the hashtag is Sew so for the Soul book. So for some reason, when I, back in the spring, um, maybe it was because I, it was when I was making clothes, I was making all those clothes, um, and I thought, oh, I wanna do some different for a few minutes, so, or, you know, for a little bit. So I started on this book. So she gives you um, prompts. Uh, there's not any, like, really, um, you know, she doesn't tell you how to, to do stitching and stuff, but um, she gives you prompts for what to do on the pages. So this first one was a combination of circles and lines. And is that, is that in focus? You see, there's mine. My first, this is pages one and two. And the way that this book is made, it's all made out of just quilt batting and then you stitch it all together with this blanket stitch. And the last thing we'll make is the cover. So this is the first spread. And then she has you skip a page. So that way you're not, you know, you can just stitch these next two pages will get sewn together. So the prompt for this one, pages um, three and four, was an X marks the spot pocket and you make a little tag to put in the pocket. Oh, and one of the things is you use, um, she said a color, but I went ahead and used a fabric. I made some pants out of this uh, cross-dyed, yarn-dyed uh, linen, and I had a bunch of fabric left over from my pants, and that's what, I, it's when I was sewing, making clothes. So I decided that what I'd do is use this linen as my fabric that I'll use throughout the book so that it ties everything together. Let me see if I can flat. So this is 
there's, let's see, here's the linen again. And so this page was the pocket with the X marks the spot, the fabric tag, and then uh, cross stitches. So, is that, I can't tell if that's focused. There we go. So this probably still needs work. I still wanna add to it. I've done some stuff on here that you don't even see. Like I alternated the color of these little cross stitches and you totally lose it. And then look at this. Okay, this, I made the X pocket and she mentioned, well, you could put something in the middle of it. This little mother of pearl vintage button, that was in Suzanne's package. Look, and I didn't measure the X or anything. I just made the whole pocket and then I was like, oh, what could I put there? And I opened um, the little bag of buttons that Suzanne sent and look at how perfect that looks there. Love it, I love it, worked out. So this page, this spread is about um, yo-yos. So you're doing yo-yos and, why am I having focus issues? So you're doing yo-yos and she said a color you don't normally work with. So the first things that came to mind when I think of a color that I don't normally work with, that would, that would definitely be like brown and orange. But um, I didn't want brown or orange in my book. There's a reason I don't work with those colors. So I decided red is another color that I don't work with very often. Um, I guess because I would hands down, there's, see, I keep doing this stuff that you don't, you can't see. There's beads and stuff in here. Um, I would always choose pink over red any day. So this is my yo-yos and a color that I don't normally work with. And then there's the linen, uh, the linen in this page. So it kind of turned into, with the linen, it definitely turned into a red, white, and blue thing. And the other thing I've kind of been doing throughout is floral fabrics. Um, these are both sack, all of this is vintage sack fabrics, the, the prints. These are out of an, taken out of an old quilt. These two are vintage. This is, these are new, but I thought they kind of, this is an old piece. And this is one of those precious things to me. This piece of fabric right here, this is the only piece I have. And I just think the colors are beautiful. So that was this, uh, this layout. And the one I'm working on right now, which all of these I could still add stuff to. This is the one I'm working on right now and it's woven strips. So I decided to go with green because I love green and it was something different, but it's still because, you know, the, the linen is still in there. So this one, I'm struggling to like this so far, but I have a feeling that once I get it really covered, um, then I'll like it a lot better. And just like this is a, this is scraps from those pants that I made. This is a rayon um, fabric that I made a dress out of. So that's a scrap from that. This is a one of my old shirts, button front shirts um, from J. Crew that I cut up when I decided it was too worn. So anyway, this is the weaving page. This is a piece of underneath there, that green, that's a piece of vintage, um, I took that out of a quilt, but it's got a beautiful texture to it. So anyway, that's where I'm at. And I decided, okay, I'm, I'll go ahead and turn the camera on. Oh, this piece, this is a strip. Why am I having focus issues? This, um, this piece is a strip out of off the edge of a quilt. See, there's the edge of the quilt binding. Um, and I just wove it in there. And I think, I, I think I'm gonna leave it sticking out. I left this piece sticking out and I was gonna leave a lot of other pieces sticking out, but I changed my mind. And Anne didn't do this, but I decided to wrap these around the edges. 
But the other thing that that she that you'll do when you get ready, and I haven't sewn any of my pages together because I where's that? I thought I brought a thing with some lace in here. Maybe maybe I didn't. Let me grab something to show you. Um, so when you sew, when you're ready, and I haven't done this because I want to um, still work on some of these, when you're ready to sew the pages together, then she's got different things that you can do, like, you know, stitch, put lace around, put lace around the edge, like, you know, like that. And then when you stitch these together, then you'll have you know, lace out of the, so there's all kinds of different ideas that she has for that. Um, but I'm, I think I'm going to wait until the end to sew mine together because if I happen to find something that I'm like, oh, that would be perfect for this page or that page, um, then I want to be able to go back and put it on. So I'm just stitching on this and I thought I would share some of it with you. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm still not absolutely in love with this layout, but what a lot of people are doing with this one is sewing little, um, not trinkets, but um, like little sewing notions and things and making, doing kind of like a sampler grid almost. So I think that's, that's the direction I wanna go. I just, I've had, pins in this the whole time. Um, so I'm ready, I think, to, I wanted to get everything stitched down. So I think at this point, just about everything is tacked down, stitched down, except for these two, because I haven't decided. I kind of think I want that to just stick out of the book. That might be pretty. If I could sew that on to that might be cool. So I just grabbed some other things, fabrics, and and then I went this morning I went through my sewing room and looking for just notion kind of trinket things that I could add to this. So I've got some um, I don't like how that's not focusing. I've got some kind of rusted looking or painted um, snaps. So I just went through some stuff and grabbed uh, little bits of random hook and eyes, broken pieces of jewelry, some vintage buttons. There's a buckle. You know, I think I'll put some of like hook and eye kind of things on there. Maybe some of these snaps, buttons. I've got a lot of these kinds of little um, embellishments. <laughs> these are from the, I think it's the 70s. Decorate your jeans. These are all beads, but I can sew them on flat. So anyway. Once I got it tacked down, then I was going to start stitching stuff on it. But I think I've finished with this tacking down. I think everything is tacked at this point, except this. And she was layering stuff on top of it. So this book is, I did the same size that she did. It's six by six. And I've seen some other um, some other dimensions, um, more like a like a you know six by eight, and I, I really kind of like that too. But here's what I started with, and so this is what I'm going with. And if you're on to me, you know that I needed another project, like I, I needed a hole in my head. But this just really appealed to me for some reason. So um, I think I'm just going to stitch this. 
she even on some of the pages which you know I mean you can do or not do whatever you want it's it's your it's your project but um, on some of these she um, recommended you know certain stitches to only do this you know certain kinds of stitches um, only do straight stitches or only do um, or you know on the other one where we did a bunch of uh, cross stitches and then I think some of the next pages um, are going to be other stitches um, Anyway, I highly recommend her um, channel if you're into slow stitching and textile collage art kind of uh, things. And of course she's got a beautiful accent and you could just listen to her all day. So there's that. I'm trying not to look at too many other um, pictures of people's books because I want to just watch her video and then kind of see where it takes me and not... So she has these videos of... Um, that, you know you can send in your picture and I haven't posted any pictures of this at all Instagram or this is the first time anyone is seeing it except me um, but there's a lot of pictures and I've tried she Anne has some like slideshows of other people's um, let me see if I can zoom I'm zoom in a little bit more I just have to make sure I actually stay on screen if I do that. Um, but she has slideshows of people, pictures that people have sent in of their progress. And I've tried not to watch those um, because I wanna, I wanna, I want mine to be, you know, like my, my aesthetic so ooh, I am really zoomed in so I do like the idea of kind of turning this page into a sampler of sorts so I don't do I want to do I could do like French knots all the way around the outside of that or I could do just stitches I think I'm just gonna do stitches And I decided on this one not to tack everything down. I just pinned it with um, applique pins. And then actually sewed it down. So it is kind of, it's different. A little bit challenging working in a, book that's already assembled uh, the only part that I'm actually having some issues with is when I want to stitch really close to the to the inside here to the very inside of the page this that gets kind of tricky but for the most part it, it's fun and she even if you watch Ann's video she even mentions you know that you know, she usually works on flat things too, but she wanted to do something different. And I kind of, I like that the book is already put together because then when you, as you're doing it, it's like it's coming together. It's, it's, it's a book already, you know. I'm not just making these um, pieces that I might not ever sew into a book, which... If you know me, you know that's, uh, I have a whole sewing room full of things that I've made and have not 
sewn into a finished project or haven't done anything with. So I that the part I to me the challenges of working in the finished I mean in the book that's already stitched together the challenges of that are totally worth the trade-off of actually having um, being able to see the book as it's coming together which is the top this is the top so she's got other videos already out this one is what she calls a breather page Let me zoom out a little bit um, where it's just very plain background and then it, the focus is on um, stitching. And then this one is gonna be circles, positive and negative. And then this layout is a pocket with a mini book in it. Do I have a weird, no, that doesn't leave me with, that only leaves me with, oh no, there it is, it was folded around. So that leaves me with, there's one other spread that she hasn't um, published anything for yet. So, anyway, I've just been folding it so that it's nice and flat um, and working on it like that. Okay, it's kind of weird because now that I turn the camera on, sorry, I had to have a drink. Um, now that I turn the camera on, it's like my mind has gone blank. Um, I wanted to stitch this on. On top of here some I love the look of when you stitch things um, in you know the color that matches green on green stitching I love the look of it because I always see things you know I'm always looking at my stuff up close but sometimes I guess the problem with that kind of stuff is that you um, then you can't see it unless you're really looking at it up close or examining it up close, then you can't really see that. These are a couple of, well, this is the same. This, oh, I wanted to use this because I went ahead and threw this um, bright turquoise colored strip in here. So I used um, some floss and did a feather stitch here to, pr to bring that um, turquoise blue in. And then I have this scrap that has a rose and it's got kind of that turquoisey blue. I guess I could put it there instead. It's kind of too wide for that. It could go, maybe it's too big or I could trim it down. That's kind of I kind of like it there, whoops. But I still like this one and I don't know, I guess I could still do that. This strip, I don't know, I, I don't know. I mean, actually I could still, I could cut it out if I didn't like it. That organdy piece. Oh my goodness, it's so weird doing this kind of stuff that once I turn the camera on, it's like my mind just went blank. Um, I think it's because I'm talking, because I'm having to talk about it while I'm doing it. And apparently that's a different part of my brain when I'm talking about something because then I just go blank. I kind of like that there. This, well, I don't know why it is this row of little bitty ones is so easy to fill up. This is like a little buckle thing. Ooh, could I put it?
put it on there. Oh, yes. Okay, I think that's, that's a go. Okay, I like that. That, that will stay. And then I think I will leave this. And I like how that little buckle piece, if, if I put this here, I like how that little buckle piece matches or coordinates with this, this piece. So I might stitch that on there. And then I've got my little buckle. I'm gonna pin that down. And then I still, for some reason, I, I still really like this piece on here. I pulled this out too. This is a piece of bark cloth. I want to do some, oh yeah, I wanted to do one of these big um, pieces of a big snap. So I could put those on. Or if I have another, I don't think I have a gold snap. That's a really cool button. That's kind of fun, that picks up that orange. I spent way too much time this morning going through all different kinds of boxes and looking for little, do we like that? No, it doesn't really, it doesn't really match. That's a brand. I mean, there's this, but the snap is so shiny. <clears throat> I guess it's the same as that. It's just as shiny as that. Someone gave me, this is a bead that someone gave me a long time ago. It's got an Eiffel Tower on it. And I was thinking, I'm gonna stitch that somewhere in this book because I've never been able to figure out what to do with it. But I wanted to save, you know, save it to do something special. <gasps> Oh, what if I take this silver stuff off since this safety pin is gold and I do gold buttons? Oh, I like that way better. Okay, the silver is out. No silver. And I don't think I have, I do have this giant hook. This is a, lay, a hook for lacing, but I don't want it to get caught. What is that? That's like a piece of an old bracelet. That is, I don't know, that's probably off of a, a belt or some, a necklace, old piece of jewelry. There's this, just that it's gold and then so I've got that circle kind of matches that circle and that circle for so I need one more round something in gold and if I have to I can go back to the other room and I don't have to this is a piece of a bracelet and I don't know why I made this this is bead weaving but I don't know why I cut when I was looking through my stuff I had cut this bracelet into pieces and I'm not sure why but I kind of thought that might play off of this oh, that's kind of pretty right there okay that might keep that out So I want something else gold and round. Oh, let me look at Suzanne's buttons. She might have something that would look good. Some of these, I, I would love to figure out how to do like a necklace pendant or something with them. That is so beautiful. I don't want to waste that. I 
thought this would be really pretty on there. But I don't want the page to be so busy that it gets lost. This one too, it's clear. That one might be pretty on there too. Well, I'll keep looking. Oh, that one's pretty. And that's a little bit different because it's a shank. So then I'd have a two hole button, a four hole button, and a shank button. So I could do that or I could do, I, th I think I like that one. Okay, and I'm gonna put these back in here. So that's what I'm up to. Um, I hope you all are staying healthy. We're still under a lot of um, regulations, like you have to wear a mask in Texas if you go into a place of business. and um, So there's still a lot of um, kind of lock down. I mean, there's, they're not prompt, they're not promoting the, you know, stay home stuff right now, but it, the times that I have gone out, I will say that when I do go do something, um, it makes me think I am the only person who's not going out because everything is so busy everywhere I go. Um, there's people everywhere. Restaurants are still um, not at 100% capacity. And so it's still, it's still not, life isn't normal, but it's kind of getting back. I feel for all the parents of young children. This thing is just totally throwing me off, this little piece of... Could cut it out. Kind of thought about maybe putting like that, a flower on there, and then I had this, or a piece of a flower, and then I had this um, rickrack that I could make a stem with and I could even do like some applique leaves I kind of like that or I don't know if I want the rickrack but oh I know I had a piece of green velvet this this deep green velvet ribbon would that be pretty there Maybe I need a whole flower for that. I could, I could cut one out. This is um, the lace of a dress, one of those dresses I bought at the second hand at the thrift store. So I could do a whole flower. That looks like a pinwheel when I, when the when that's straight. Anyway, okay. Those are both possibilities. Well, because my mind has just completely gone blank now that I turned the camera on, I think I am going to, um, I'll upload this video and um, I think I'm, I'm gonna keep working on this. I've got some other stuff. I need to get back to the um, giveaway journal um, I'll tell you where, where I am on that is that I am a stickler and a rule follower and I did some research on doing giveaways on YouTube and there are some pretty strict guidelines about things you have to do when you do a giveaway on YouTube. Ooh, I like that together. That looks cute. Um, so I need, I've been putting it off now because I have to, I need to write my official rules 
and I'm still not clear on uh, international giveaways. Um, my mom suggested that what I might do with the giveaway journals is I will, you know, randomly select someone from the comments and then um, I could sell you the journal for a dollar on Etsy. So that would mean that I, I mean, Etsy's going to take 30 or, I mean, mo they're going to take all that and then I'll have to pay them a commission on the shipping on top of it. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just playing with it because I want to do it legitimately, but I want to be able to open it to everybody that wants to enter. So once I figure out the logistics and how I can do it and be in compliance with all of uh, YouTube's um, regulations, I'll... Um, I'll get my rules written and posted and I can kind of start to move, I can move forward, work on that again. Um, I'm kind of, this, I'm in my, I brought all this in my paper room. Ooh, I kind of like that. It's kind of ugly, but it's kind of cool. Um, I brought all this in my paper room instead of my sewing room because I don't have a good way to record in my sewing room and the lighting in my sewing room is really bad um, for video. I have a lot of lights, individual small lights that I use when I'm working in there, but um, there's some tatting. Oh, lost my train of thought. That's the thing. I, I'm not very good at this. Being, trying to be creative and talking at the same time. What was I saying? Oh, I brought all this stuff in the paper room. And I have a journal that I need to be working on. That I am kind of behind on. And I've made a huge mess in here with... Oh, I kind of like that. I've made a big mess in here with all of this. See, okay, I think I'll like, uh, this isn't gonna bother me, I don't think, once I stitch, do something here, if I do, or put something on it. I think it'll be okay. At first, this page I did not like at all, and now it's growing on me. And this one I wasn't too pleased, but now I think I really like it. Um, I don't usually work with, I don't usually make yo-yos. And my daughter has a terrible phobia of things like barnacles. And we even know where it came from. Um, there is a book that I, I think I bought the book. And I sure did myself no favors because um, that book ended up costing me years of therapy. But it was a children's book called A Bad Case of the Stripes. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, but it's called A Bad Case of the Stripes. And it's about this little girl who um, gets ill with these conditions that turn her skin different colors or she gets like these. Anyway, there's part of it where it looks like she has barnacles growing all over her skin. And it freaked my daughter out so badly. Y'all, I'm not kidding. It. The other thing was, it. it was all about the girl thinking she was sick. So my daughter literally went through a stage where she thought she was sick. I mean, it also correlated with the death of my father, but um, she went through this stage where she thought she was sick 24 hours a day, and it was really hard for us. I mean, I was taking, she would want me to take her temperature like six or eight times a day 
and we think part of it came from this book that scared her so bad. And this is when she was little. She was like um, five or six. And then she was seven when my father passed away. And she unfortunately was with him when he passed away unexpectedly. And um, that really got to her because, you know, she was over at my mom. My mom may want to turn off so I don't make her because I'll make my mom cry. But my daughter was spending the day or had spent the night at my parents' house. And then my dad was all of a sudden not feeling well. And they got in the car to take him to the emergency room. And um, anyway, he passed away from a pulmonary embolism at the very young age of 59. And um, she was with him. He, he, they never revived him when they got to the hospital. And Anyway, after that, she was, well, we did a lot of therapy because she thought she was going to die. She just, the, um, the notion that you could just, someone could just be here and then be totally, you know, you're fine and you're watching TV on a Saturday morning or, and then the next thing you know, they're gone. Um, anyway, I, how did I even get on all of that? Oh, I know, because of the barnacles. Anyway, I would not recommend that book for children. It's called A Bad Case of the Stripes. Oh, my goodness. It just, it was a curse for us. And it took us a while to figure out that's where that had come from. But even now, if I show her a picture of something that looks like barnacles or circles or something growing on people's skin or growing on something, she just totally, she can't, it gives her anxiety. Sorry, I'm telling my daughter's dark, deep, dark secrets. But anyway, you know, I've left very few reviews. I'm not a reviewer on Amazon. I've been buying stuff on there forever, but... I don't leave a lot of reviews, and that book, A Bad Case of the Stripes, that's one of the things um, that I've left a review on on Amazon, and my review was not very nice. Um, and there were a lot of other reviews on that book saying this is not good for young children. Anyway, okay, that's not what I was going to talk about today. I was going to talk about this, but... I think, I think I'm going to let you guys, well, let's see. I could sew something else on. Do I like that there? I guess it's just weird to me because I keep filling up this, you know, at, once I do that, I'm only going to have one empty. Why am I not putting this somewhere else? Like there or here? Is it good there? Do I like it there? go there. I guess this square just is calling out. Put something here. This is a little crochet lace. Crochet trim. You could just put that, stitch that on. That might be cute. Just stitch it. It's like almost exactly the same size as that. I could just stitch it down the side of that. Anyway, I'll put the links, guys, to um, Ann Brooks um, Challenge. And then um, check out the Sew for the Soul hand. Sew for the Soul. And it's, it's like that. Sew for the Soul book. Um, you can check out that hashtag. And... Um, look at some other pieces, some things that people have done. And this is not a, it's, you know, it's a do it at your, on your own. She posts the videos and then you can do them whenever you have time. And it, it's, there's no rules about anything like that. You just, you know, whatever you, it, but the, the prompts are good. I like having prompts. 
um, and then you can just carry it, do whatever you want with it. So anyway, check out Ann Brooke. And if you watch Rachel at Roxy Creations, you've probably seen her working on her um, Sew for the Soul handmade spool um, piece. So anyway, I'm going to keep working on this for a little bit. I'm enjoying myself and I hope you all are doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.